Hi, y'all. Welcome to the 40 Acres. Um, before we get started, me and Taylor are actually going to introduce ourselves. Um, so just so you know, you are giving, getting a tour by Taylor Square today. So hi, my name is Taylor Jones. Um, I'm actually a graduated senior. Um, I was a BA theater and dance major with a minor in communication studies, and I'm actually from Houston, Texas. So all my H-Town folks out there, hello, welcome, um, and Tash, take it away. Yeah, thanks. So I'm also named Taylor. I'm also from the Houston area um, and I am a rising senior, which is so crazy to say. I feel so old, um, but I am double majoring in government and sustainability. I have a certificate in Spanish and then I'm also on the pre-law track, um, but welcome to the University of Texas virtual tour. Uh, we are going to start off with the most exciting stop, which is the library. Um, so I'm going to click our way over to there. So we are currently at the architecture library. Um, a lot of the different undergraduate colleges will have different libraries that like their books in the libraries are associated with that college. Um, but it's not necessarily that you can only go into that library if you're a student in that college. So if you want to go study in the architecture library and you are a liberal arts student, that's totally fine. Um, but the most popular library on the biggest library on campus is something called PCL that stands for Perry Castaneda Library um, and it has six floors to it. It's personally my favorite place to study on campus um, to talk a little bit about the resources in there. Whenever you walk, whenever you walk into PCL, one of the first things you'll see is something called the Public Speaking Center. It's basically an office where you take pitches, presentations that can be extracurricular or for your class or, or for your classes. And they're not gonna write it for you, but they're gonna help you fine tune and perfect it. And then in correlation with that office, we have an office called the Writing Center, which does the same exact thing except for writing. So English essays, lab reports, love letters, whatever you got, you can take any one piece of writing to them up to three times. And then after that, um, they cut you off. I think it's because they think you're stressing too much about it. Because when I say they go word by word, they will literally like word by word. Um, we also have two computer labs on the first floor. One's a Mac lab and one's a PC lab. So if you have a certain preference or if there's certain software that only runs on one of them that you need to use, that's all gonna be free with your college tuition. Um, we also have an area that's um, a collaborative study area on the first floor with a drop-in space for STEM tutoring. Specifically, it's usually those bigger intro chem and bio classes that a lot of people take. Um, our College of Natural Sciences is one of our biggest colleges on campus, and those intro chemistry and bio classes tend to be a little bit more difficult, and I have a lot of students in them. That's a great place to go if you're having trouble with a problem set or if you just need help with a concept because usually the people who are tutoring there are students who did very well in the class the year before or a couple years before you. Um, there's also an area that's my favorite place to study on campus called the Scholars Commons. It is completely silent um, and they have the best chairs on campus. So one of my biggest like things with studying is that my chair has to be super comfortable or I will not get anything done. Um, and they have these cushy chairs, it's completely silent so I won't get distracted and I love it so much. So if you're ever on campus, you need a quiet space to study, Scholars Commons, first floor of PCL. Um, you might be wondering, Taylor, what about the other six floors of PCL? Well, thank you for asking. There's actually different noise levels on every floor. So what it's meant to be is like a one-stop shop for any type of studying. So one of the things that you have to figure out freshman year is what type of studying works best for me. Um, a lot of times the studying that you did in high school is not going to be the same with what you do in college. And so PCL is great because you can figure out, okay, do I work well in a quiet environment and go to the third floor? Or do I work well in a collaborative environment and you go to the fifth floor? Um, with that said, if you do go to the third floor and like you bring your like chips or if you bring like dinner with you and you start studying, people will probably like give you dirty looks until you go to a more like loud floor. Um, but so people do really take like the noise level seriously. And I really highly recommend using all the different floors and figuring out what works best for you. Um, but another thing that I'd like to talk about at the library really quickly before Taylor talks about our next stop is going to be the Sanger Learning Center. So it's actually not in this library, but it's in the building that Taylor's about to talk about. And it's a tutoring place um, for students on campus. It's pretty unique because you're never, gonna, you're never gonna go in there and be like, okay, I just want general accounting tutoring. They'll actually have a tutor or help for a specific accounting 304 class that you're in, which is really nice because you're getting direct one-on-one -on -one work with the material that's being taught in your class. Um, so that's a little bit about Sanger Learning Center that is going to be free with tuition as well. 
Um, and that's all I have to say about the libraries. I know the most exciting stop on our tour, and we are going to go to our next stop, which will be Jester Residence Hall. All right, so right now you can see um, Jester Residence Hall. Um, Jester is actually one of our largest and most used residence hall here on campus. We do have 14 residence halls in total, so you can definitely kind of get to us around to figure out which residence hall is perfect for you. Um, this is just the one that holds the most students. It does have 3,000 undergraduate students who do live in here. Um, and as a student on campus, you can stay your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. It really doesn't matter. If you want to stay on campus, you definitely can. I lived on campus for two years just because I wasn't ready to like move off an adult yet. Um, and then I did it junior year and I still wasn't ready, but it was already too late. Um, so I definitely say residence hall life is pretty fun. Um, but like I do, but like we'd like to say here on UT's campus is that you're actually not required to live on campus your freshman year. And so UT doesn't require freshmen to do so. And so you can definitely decide to live off campus elsewhere your freshman year. But I'd definitely say living on campus is highly recommended, at least your freshman year, just because that's where everyone is. You get to meet lots of cool new friends, meet tons of different people, and also your food and your classes are literally a hop, skip, and a jump away. So I definitely say living on campus your freshman year is the move. Um, but I would like to say for all of our residence halls, definitely take a look at our residence hall, like UT Housing and Dining website, just because every residence hall is kind of like the houses of Hogwarts. You're definitely going to get something different for every single residence hall we have here on campus. And so you are more of like, like a loud person when you're in the middle of everything. Jester is a, this is a residence hall that never sleeps. I mean, people will be stepping outside. They'll be having, not parties, but like parties of friends <laughs> inside of like the dining halls or upstairs or by saying a learning center and all that and in between. So Jester is definitely the residence hall that is the most lively. Um, but as you see right now, unfortunately, you can only see the outside of this building. You really can't see the inside of it, but definitely kind of just visualize with me and definitely also go into the website. Um, and you'll see that every residence, wow, every residence hall has uh, the same kind of parameters inside of the rooms, which means you get a loftable bed and bed frame, you get movable dresser, dresser drawers, as well as like a desk, a desk chair, um, and your own closet. And we also have three different bathroom styles on campus. And so there's definitely different ways to get a bathroom style and definitely just will depend on your residence hall of choice. And so my freshman year, I actually lived in Duran Residence Hall. And so Duran was one of the newest ones on campus. It kind of mirrors San Jacinto, but they're on like opposite sides of campus. And, and what I had in that dorm was I actually had me and my roommate, and then we actually had our own private style bathroom. And so private style is exactly how it sounds. It's just you and your roommate and your bathroom there. And so you kind of just share that between you two. Um, the only downside for private style bathrooms that I like to say is that you do have to clean it and provide for it yourself. So you definitely know if you're the type of person that does not like to clean, which was kind of me, um, but more me than anything, I definitely say try to choose a style of bathroom that's going to get clean for you just because you do have to do all that maintenance and buy toilet paper and everything else yourself. But we also do have community style bathrooms, kind of like I think every college on campus probably does. Um, and what's really cool about community style bathroom is that depending on where it is, kind of like how Jester has it, is that there is a community style bathroom on every floor and only the people who live on those floors have access to those bathrooms. And so you're not really sharing it with like 30 people, maybe like 10 to 15 because there is male identified and female identified community style bathrooms. And I do think re like community style bathrooms get a bad rep, but they are cleaned twice a day, every day. Um, every time I went inside a community style bathroom, I never had to wait for anybody. There's like four stalls, like three showers and two sinks. And so you definitely get to have a little variation and you'll find the perfect time to like go shower, do everything you need to do in the morning and so on and so forth. But there's also a happy medium, which is our third type of bathroom, and that is our shared, which is kind of like Jack and Jill style bathroom. And how those bathrooms are, is like you and your roommate, a bathroom in the middle, and two other people on the other side. But they do kind of mirror the private style bathrooms in the instance that you do have to clean and provide for it yourself. So I definitely say choose your residence hall based on the person you are. Do you want room, one roommate? Do you want three? Um, do you want to clean your own bathroom? Do you want it to have that little more feel like close-knit feeling or do you want to kind of meet all your neighbors because with community style you're definitely going to meet tons of new people 
But if you also decide to live on campus, you'll actually get a meal plan. And so what this meal plan includes is unlimited swipes are all our buffet style areas here on campus. And so we do have two of those, one located directly inside this building called J2, and another one like another one inside our all female residence hall, but it is open for everyone and kin solving. And so you do have unlimited swipes to all those. You can swipe in maybe at 9 a.m. if you want and kind of stay there for as long as you want. Um, but then we also have our a la carte style areas. And so as a student, if you do live on campus, you actually get 600 dining dollars. Um, and so those can be used at all the a la carte style areas. And we have too many of them for me to actually name, but I know this building has like one and then like a market that's technically a la carte as well as well as like some of the other residence halls around campus and so you'll get 300 each semester and you can use that up as much as you want um, and then you'll also get vivo pay and so you'll get 200 of those and vivo pay can be used anywhere vivo pay is accepted and so there's um there's a wendy's in here there's a jester java aka starbucks inside this building um, you'll also get Chick-fil-A and our Student Activity Center, which we're going to see later on. Um, and so there's definitely tons of different ways to use your Google Play. I actually used mine to buy all my textbooks my freshman year just because I had enough. The co-op took them and I was like, give me the textbook. Here's my Google Play. I don't want them. Um, and so that's definitely an option you can choose. But I would definitely, like I said, before we move on to our next stop, is that Definitely choose a residence hall that is good for you. Go on tons of different virtual tours if you can. If you do get the option, definitely come to campus whenever that time rolls around. Just because it does just feel better when you're kind of walking inside of the residence hall and you actually get to see what the inside looks like to kind of make your decision if that's where you want to live. But that's all I really have for housing. We can actually move on to our next stop. And Tash, take it away. Perfect. So we are now at Gregory Gym. This is actually just like a 30 second, if that walk from Jester Residence Hall, um, just to give you an idea of how campus is sort of shaped. So there is this, there's a road called Speedway. It's an all pedestrian walking path and it cuts right through the heart of campus. And so these buildings that we've been talking about are on the southmost end of Speedway. Um, and they're all like, if you wanted to walk between the three of them, it would maybe take one minute. So you're very, we're, we haven't moved much on campus right now. Um, but this is Gregory Gym. This is a, one of three places to work out on campus. Personally, my favorite place to work out because it's centrally located. Um, you can work out in between classes and there's also just so many resources in here. So just to talk about a few of them. Um, so if you walk in on the first floor, you'll, you will see a rock wall climbing area, a cardio pit, and a semicircle of handball and racquetball courts, which I did not know were even sports until I came to college. Um, and then nestled in between those, we have sort of like a soul cycling studio. It's not like an official soul cycling studio, but they'll hold similar classes to that. Um, but they put in about three years ago now, I believe. And then across from that, we have a hallway that goes into this old part of Gregory Gym. Um, so on one part of the hallway, you will turn and you'll see that there's a huge weightlifting area. Um, I have never been in there, but I heard it's very nice. And then on the other side, we have two studios for instructionally led classes like Zumba, Pilates, yoga. If you're interested in taking like instructionally led classes as your way of working out, um, at least for like one semester throughout college, maybe I recommend looking into something called the Texercise Pass. It's $90 up front but it gives you unlimited um, access to classes throughout the year. And um, alternatively, you could just pay on a class by class basis, which is usually, it depends on the class, but like about $5. So totally up to you. Um, and then the last thing on that hallway that I was just talking about is something called the Outdoor Activity Center. Um, it's a really great place to rent camp, like camping gear or hiking gear or canoes. Um, Austin has a huge culture for camping hiking, just like outdoor activities in general, and most people don't have the gear for that in their residence hall or in their apartment, so you can actually just go there, rent it out for the weekend, and bring it back when you're done. So going back to the main part of Gregory Gym, there are two floors above the entrance. Um, the first floor directly above us has three courts. They're convertible between basketball and volleyball, and then on the third floor, it's something called the Sky Track. It's my favorite thing in Greg. Um, it is a seventh of a mile indoor track, glass paneling on the side. You get a nice skyline view of that area of the university while you're running, um, which is great when it's like 100 plus degrees outside and you want like the feeling of running outside, but you want the air conditioning. It's a great like combo of the two. Um, and then in addition to that, we have 
two indoor pools that are kind of like in a back corner of Greg. Outside we have two rec pools, a lap pool, and a hot tub where you and 18 of your closest friends can all hang out. All of these things are going to be the terminology they use is free with tuition, um, with the exception of any of the classes, you have to pay the instructors, which is a great um, on-campus job if you like to lead any of those classes. Or for the rock wall climbing area, there is a fee to use that as well. Um, a couple, one other thing that I wanna talk about is something called um, intramural sports. So intramural sports are basically just like sports for fun around campus. Um, essentially, you can make teams with people in organizations on campus or people from your class. And there's literally so many different options. You can do like, you can do like water polo, you can do flag football, you can do dodgeball. There's so many different options in terms of the sports that you're playing. And there's three levels, um, A, B, and C and they differentiate like skill levels. So you choose one that is like good for your skill level and they'll give you a, a description of which one is which. And then if you win your championship at the end of the um, semester for your bracket, for your sport, you get a t-shirt, it's an intramural championship t-shirt. And it's like actually a big deal to get it because I've seen people like stopped on campus and be like, hey, what sport did you win? Tell me about your game. Um, so it's actually like kind of a weird like source of respect for students on campus. Um, and another thing about Greg that I think is really cool is that it has such a unique um, place in UT's history. This is actually where the hookum was invented. Um, so it was a pep rally against Texas Christian University and they were all in Gregory Gym. One of our cheerleaders decided that he wanted to do a hook em horns. And so um, the other cheerleader, Harley Clark, got up on stage in front of the entire student population that was at the pep rally. He said hook em horns. And the funny part about it is that administration hated it and the student body loved it, which is, and they tried to get us to stop doing it, us being like a student body. Um, but now it's just become like a huge part of UT's brand and the culture. And you can go anywhere in the world and do a hook em horns or like, say UT or say you're a Longhorn and you'll meet other people who are part of this big family, this big community, which is pretty insane to me. Um, another thing that I wanna talk about in the essence of sports is D1 athletics, specifically Texas football. So we just moved to Darrow K Memorial Stadium. Um, this is right across from Gregory Gym and it is home to our Texas football team. As you can see on the PowerPoint slide, it seats 100,000 um, people, but they're adding 20,000 more seats to the student section. They're gonna have a cushy new student section by the time that y'all get here, which I'm very jealous of. Um, and you get to watch Texas football there. So whenever I was in high school, I hated football. I like just didn't get the point of it, I gotta be honest. And so I had very low expectations coming into college. Um, but my friends peer pressured me into going to a game. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go all out. I got cowboy boots, I like decked myself out in burnt orange. I had the flash task going on and everything. And I went to my first game and I had so much fun and I was actually super surprised because I've never had fun at a football game before, prior to coming to college. Um, but you're surrounded by a sea of like burnt orange and white. And it's just like a super surreal experience to know that you're a part of that community and that culture. Um, but if you are interested in attending Texas football or just D1 athletics in general, I recommend doing something called the big ticket. It's 175 bucks at the beginning of the year. And then you get a pass to go to every single home game for any varsity sports. So that's football, basketball, volleyball, um, swimming, like there's so many. And I really recommend looking into that because you can also sell your ticket if you can't go to a game. Like I know Taylor sold her LSU ticket for like 200 plus dollars or something. And she actually made a profit on her big ticket. So if you play it smart, you can actually make a profit from it. Um, and basically the university is paying you to go to their games. So um, that's all I really have to say about that. Um, Taylor's gonna take it away and talk about a similar stadium area, kind of a stadium, not really. Um, and in the fine arts department. So Taylor, take it away. All right, um, I love me a good football game, but as a theater major, um, I also do love me a good show. So this is actually our Bass Concert Hall. Um, this is one of our largest theaters on campus. We do have like four, I think four or five. I'm, I'm a major and I can't think about all the theaters we got on this campus. But this is a major one just because this is where a lot of Broadway shows actually come when they're traveling through 
I guess when they go on Broadway tours, um, they actually do kind of make a little pit stop in Austin and they do put on the show here, maybe for a few days um, at Boss Bass Concert Hall. So my freshman year, I got to see Newsies for the first time. I saw like the Cinderella play. It was really cool. She did like some really beautiful like dress transformation. I was so amazed. Um, there was like some magic trick, the illusionist. I mean, we've had YouTubers come here. I know like the Try Guys. Um, Tara Noah popped up at one point. So like this is definitely the spot for um, a lot of Broadway um, talk shows. Speaking of talk shows, something that is really cool um, that I don't know if y'all ever going to get the chance to do it again. But we actually had the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Um, and he actually came on campus and he actually did an entire show. And so that is also something that is really cool that kind of goes on in Bass Concerts Hall. And so a lot of students, I didn't get to go just because, I don't know why I didn't go. I don't think I was doing anything. I was at work and I worked right across from this. But <laughs> this was actually going on and like they actually gave free tickets out to students. You just have to stay in a really long line. Um, people got to go. Some people got really cool scholarships for the rest of their college career. And so it's definitely something that's like part of the arts district of just Austin, that this is definitely a part of that culture. Just because we do have a really big football stand, we also have really big theater presence and art presence. And so this kind of shows that um, side of UT as well as the side of Austin is that you will get your fair share of arts and entertainment here on campus. And Bass Concert Hall is just a little sliver of that, but it's a pretty good one just because um, Hamilton rode through here as well. And so if you are interested in going to go see a play, um, something they do for students is kind of like the big ticket, but it's actually called the Bass Pass and you actually get cheap or discounted tickets for students to go out to go see these plays. And so like, I went to go see the Newsies for like 10 bucks and like, you can't see the Newsies for 10 bucks. That's just not how that works. But you definitely got that option to do so. If you are an arts connoisseur and you do want to kind of go out and go see a play, definitely think about the Bass Pass because you never know what's going to come and you definitely just want to be prepared. But that's all I have to say for Bass Concert Hall. We can actually move on to our next stop, um, which is, I believe, is the MLK statue. Yes. All right. And Taylor, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> Great. Thanks. So just to orient y'all, we've sort of made our way north of campus now. Um, we started on the south end of campus and we're kind of right in the middle of campus. Um, but this is an area called the East Mall and right in the heart of the East Mall, there is the MLK statue. So we like to point out the statue on our tours because it has such a cool history. Um, so in the early 1990s, students looked around campus and we didn't have a single person of color as a statue on campus and we wanted to change that. So one of our black fraternities spearheaded this project to get an MLK statue built on our campus. And they worked directly with administration um, who agreed to take $1 from every student's tuition for about five years, I believe. And then it was finally erected in 1999. And uh, his placement on campus is also very um, intentional because he's reaching out to the east side of Austin, which historically and even today has been the predominantly underrepresented side of the city. So he's sort of a symbol and a beacon to welcome everybody, no matter your background, to be a part of our university and to be a Longhorn on campus. And um, I say this on every tour, but I, I think it speaks to one of my favorite things about being a student at UT, which is that UT is a big campus. There are a lot of people who call the 40 acres their home, um, but your voice really does matter and you're given the tools and the resources so that you can enact tangible change um, that is like actually present on campus. And that can be something as big as the MLK statue. Um, and this one was actually the second one to be built on a college campus in the United States after his alma mater. Um, there's a little bit of history, a cool fun fact about this area of campus and the essence of student initiative and student voice. Taylor's going to talk a little bit about the building right next to the MLK statue. Yeah, so not moving far at all. Literally, you can be at the MLK statue, turn a little bit to your left, depending on which way you're facing, and here's this building. And so this is actually like a very, I won't say a bad picture of it, but like 
chances are. But this building that you actually see behind it is it's not the not Student either. Activity Center. Um, student Activity Center, they just angled it a different way when it had Student Activity Center in it. But this is the WCP or the Bill C. Powers Student Activity Center. Um, and this is like the hub of student life here on campus, just because this is where all the food is. And so this is definitely the place where you kind of take advantage of that. And so what Taylor was talking about it being a student initiative was that they actually had this like huge little lot open and they were actually, what I've heard was gonna turn into a parking garage. And students was like, no, we want another place where students can just be students and we can just kind of hang and be ourselves because the only other student union we have is like up a hill and all the way past the tower. And so they wanted something a little bit on this side of campus. And so the university was like, okay, well, if we give it to you, the students is like, we want to pick everything. And so the students actually decided that the wall color you see in there, the chairs, I know like Ikea put like, all their furniture out on the lawn and students got to pick which chairs they choose, tables, everything in between. And so if you do get to walk in that building, you can kind of see that student initiative is real here. They asked the students what they wanted and the students actually got to pick what they wanted as well. And so it's definitely something you'll see kind of going on through this building. And so um, a lot of things in there are definitely student driven. And so on our first floor, we actually have the Multicultural Engagement Center or the MEC, which is for students of color on campus. And it is just a great safe place for students of color as well as allies just to go in there, kind of hang out, people study in there. There's usually tons of different organization meetings going on in there, as well as they do tons of different events out on the lawn or inside the building for student awareness and student involvement but right upstairs from there we actually have our student government office and so, so one thing about UT that I realized when I first got here is that student government is huge here and so if you do want to get inside get in your start in student government that's definitely the building to go that's definitely the room to go inside just because the campus involvement in terms of student government is huge. If you want to be the next student body president someday, you definitely want to step foot in that building just because it kind of gives you your little where to start, kind of gives you that starting place. Um, but then we also have our um, we also have our gender and sexuality center in there as well. Um, that is called the GSC, and that is for the LGBTQ plus community students here on campus as well. And it kind of works like the NBC, where it is it's just a safe place for students they can go in. I know there's a library in there. They got free printing. Um, it's a great place to go in there just to have a conversation about certain certain topics. And that's definitely something you can do inside the GSC, but I know they also hold tons of different events. They had a block party with the NEC one time and I got to tie dye a really cool shirt. So I definitely say um, this building is definitely one where students can just be themselves. They can go and chill. You can eat, you can study. There's tons of table and study spaces. So I definitely say take advantage of it. But my favorite place inside this building and no one can steer me wrong, Second to Chick-fil-A is the sleeping stairs. And so the sleeping stairs is exactly how it sounds. There are these giant staircases with pillows and cushions on them, and you can literally just catch people sleeping on campus. And so I definitely say that, like, you will never be a stranger to sleep on campus. I've had my fair share of naps. Um, just have your little backpack as a pillow and just go from there. Um, and that's definitely a designated spot. It's one of those places that if you ever get a spot in the sleeping stairs, don't move because you won't get it back if you do. Um, but there are tons of different places on campus that you can actually take naps, and there's actually an entire, like, map nap, nap, map, that's a word. <laughs> there's a whole nap nap, where you can actually find all the great places to nap on campus. And so that is just one of the places inside this building. But this building is really cool because a lot of people call it the living room of the University of Texas, just because it is a place to kind of chill. You can get you some food. Like I said, there is a Chick-fil-A. There's also a Taco Cabana, as well as this restaurant, this restaurant called Zen, as well as one of our like mini Starbucks on campus. So that's definitely the building just to kind of go in if you just want to chill and kind of take a breather, definitely the perfect building to do so. But to actually move on to our next stop, that's actually the picture of the building you see, and we're going to get a better <laughs> picture of it. Um, and it's our College Liberal Arts. I forgot the actual name of it, so I'm going to give it to Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. It's, um, so welcome to Patton Hall. Um, we're still in the East Mall, literally right next to the Student Activity Center, like Taylor just said. Um, but it's at this stop that we like to talk about honors programs. In addition to being home to the College of Liberal Arts, this building houses two honors programs on campus. The first one is called Plan 2, which is an interdisciplinary honors major. It's probably one of our most prestigious majors offered on campus um, and most competitive to get into. 
But if you do get into the program, you get a really cool network of people that you get to take classes with and you have an amazing alumni um, just from this program in general. And the goal of it is to give you an interdisciplinary advanced college experience. Um, because it is such a broad major, a lot of people choose a double major and something outside of plan two, but you're not required to. But if you want to, you're given a bunch of resources to be able to do so. Um, alternatively, we also have another program housed in this building which is liberal arts honors. So you can be a student within the College of Liberal Arts and say that you want to have an honors specification, but you don't want to have like a major in an honors program. Liberal arts honors is a great um, program for you then because it's more of an add on to your degree already within the College of Liberal Arts rather than being a major within and of itself. Um, a couple of our other bigger colleges also have honors programs. So our Cocker School of Engineering, our Moody Communication College, um, our College of Natural Sciences, and then our business school also have honors programs. One to highlight is the Business Honors Program. It's officially called the Canfield Business Honors Program now, uh, but it's pretty unique because like Plan 2, it's actually a degree plan, so you get a major in Business Honors, um, and again, you are like highly able to add another major to Business Honors, or you can just stick with business honors and take that as you will. Um, another thing to take into account is that like, if you want to do a program, if you're interested in a college or a department that's not within those schools I just listed, a lot of times there will be smaller honor specifications within those departments. So I really recommend going to the department that's going to have your major in it and seeing if you have other honors opportunities. Um, because nine times out of 10 in my experience there is. We just talk about those because those are the biggest like official established honors programs on campus. Um, so that's all I really have to say about honors. The benefits to them tend to be smaller class sizes and you get one-on-one -on -one work with your professors. And most of the time you have a thesis you have to complete at the end of your four years that sort of like culminates your honors classes and your experiences. But don't feel like you have to take honors classes or be in an honors program to have like an advanced class course like classes in college are hard as it is and so um, you don't need to be in especially at UT um, and you don't need to be in an honors program where if you just want to like have challenging classes like that's that's a, that's a given um, so honors program is just usually like a community on campus that are a little bit delve into an area that you're interested in as well um, but we're going to move on to our next stop and Taylor's going to take it away another academic stop oh I went too far Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> our next stop is our College of Business, um, which is actually our, I, I literally see the name of it in my mouth, but like, I can't say it. It is the Macomb School of Business, um, which is actually like one of the best business schools in the world. So definitely that's something you are interested in. Definitely come to Macomb's. Um, but something that we really do like to talk about here is all the options of majors as well as minors and certificates. And so the business school actually has a really cool one that I think a lot of students definitely should take advantage of. And that's actually, that's actually the Bridging Disciplines um, Certificate. Yes, <laughs> Bridging Disciplines Certificate. Um, I know I have a friend who's actually a theater and dance major and he actually minored in business, and he got his Bridging Disciplines Business Certificate and he actually like wants to own a theater one day. And so that's definitely something that's like a route we can go on. But there are tons of different combinations of certificates and minors. What's the real difference? I technically, technically don't know. I think certificate is like 18 hours, whereas like a minor is 15. Um, but like, they're kind of the same thing, but like not. Um, but that's definitely something you can take advantage of during your college career. I'm actually a community, a community, a communication studies minor. It is early, I'm sorry. A communication studies minor. Um, and so apart from me doing all the hours I needed for my theater and dance major, I actually took 15 hours of commun communication studies. And so I actually got to take like speech classes. I got to take like communication, lying and deception. It was a really cool option for me to go out there. And so you can actually go on our website. You can even just type in like, UT certificate and minors and you can actually find the list of all the certificate and minors that UT does have to offer. It is a great combination for any major and you can literally do anything you want. So if that's still like a little bit of something you always be interested in. I definitely say pick up a certificate or minor just because it is a great addition to any major 
kind of out there. There are tons of different options. Um, but this is a really cool building, like um, Tash said, and it's actually like right across from Gregory Gym. So we kind of just made like a really cute little circle right now. Um, haven't went that far, and that just kind of shows you how close everything is, as well as still being farther away from each other. Um, and so that's all I got to really say about the business school. Tash, you have anything to add? If not, we can move on on. So it's perfect. We're yeah. going to make our way to another academic stop, which is the Gatesdale Computer Science Complex. This is the home for um, the Department of Computer Science, um, but it's also just a really cool building on campus. Um, so the way that this building just like came to be is that we have these things called hackathons every year, um, every semester actually, and uh, it's essentially a coding competition and they place you at different levels of proficiency against people who have sort of the same experience and background as you. Um, and we have recruiters come and department heads of the computer science department um, coming to check out predominantly the computer science students projects, um, and but also everybody else's projects. And one year the Michael Dell and the Bill Gates Foundation um, were so impressed by the projects that our computer science students were doing that they said that they wanted to collectively help fund a building specifically just for that department um, and that's sort of how this building came to be. I think that speaks to um, integration of like academics with professional development. So college is all about taking your classes, doing well in them. There's also sort of this like looming thing in the back of your head which is like I have to figure out what I'm going to do after college. Am I going to get a job? Am I going to go to do grad school? Um, it's sort of like something you figure out throughout your four years. And the really cool thing about UT is that you're given so many opportunities to sort of dip your heel in the water and experience what would this look like for me. Um, and so a great way to do that is through like internship opportunities or research opportunities, which we'll talk about in just a second. But in terms of professional development, one of the ways that UT has sort of tried to make sure that we have the skills to succeed in whatever we want to do after graduation is through something called the FLAG program. Um, so flags represent different skills. An example is like there's an independent inquiry flag. So everybody has to do some sort of class that qualifies as like um, a research somewhat based class. Um, there's writing flag. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that students have to fulfill. It doesn't matter if you're in the College of Fine Arts, Business, Engineering, Liberal Arts, um, everybody who graduates with a degree from the University of Texas has to meet their flag program. Um, and the way they created the program is that UT interviewed employers who are hiring the highest rates of undergraduate students directly out of undergrad. And they were like, okay, so what are these skills that these students have that made you hire them directly out of undergrad that maybe other students their age didn't have? Um, and based off of those responses, they created our flag program. So that sort of speaks at least slightly to like the professional development and the skills that UT is trying to help you build both within the classroom and outside of the classroom. To dive more deeply into like um, academics in general, just like by themselves. So one thing that I like to talk about is class sizes. One of my biggest misconceptions coming into UT was that I was going to walk into every class, so it was going to be a sea of just like 500 people, there's a speck in the back, that's you, and then there's a tiny professor like, at the bottom of this huge auditorium. Um, it's not like that. Will you have big classes? Yeah, you'll have probably some pretty big classes. Um, typically concentrated your freshman and sophomore year, but you'll also have small classes. So 70% of our classes at UT have um, like a class size of 40 or less, and our full-time staff, to, our full-time like faculty to um, full-time student ratio, it's going to be about 18 to 1 to or 17 to 1 depending on the year it goes back and forth between the two um, but there are two programs that we like to highlight for those bigger class sizes that you might have your freshman and sophomore year a first um, thing that we like to talk about is something called discussion sections and you will meet outside of your lecture hall time with a TA and about 20 other students um, and it just gives you an opportunity say you don't want to raise your hand in front of I don't know like 150 other people we get it, raise your hand in front of like 15 other people or 19 other people, um, and it just gives you a smaller group environment if that's how you know you like to learn. Um, and you get a pretty good idea, okay, my understanding was being taught in lecture or there's some pretty key things I'm missing out on. And another program we have here is something called FIGS. That stands for first year interest groups. Um, and FIGS are small group environments specifically tailored for freshmen. Um, so a FIG is something you'll sign up for during orientation, um, whenever you're registering for classes freshman year. And for some people it's required, for other people it's not. If you are at orientation, registering for classes and figuring out what you wanna take and your FIG is not required, I highly recommend signing up for it anyways, even if um, you don't have to. 
because it's essentially a built-in community into your schedule. So these people will take about three to four classes with you your first semester. If you're in the College of Natural Sciences, it can extend to your second semester. Um, and they not only do they take classes with you, but they meet once a week with you and your fake mentor. And your fake mentor is going to be another student who is either one to three years older than you, who is in a very similar department as you or the same exact department that you're in. Um, and they are just like a student voice to advocate for you on campus, help you navigate resources, um, any questions, concerns that you have that maybe you don't want to go to your academic advisor about, you want like a student perspective about, they're a really, really great place to go. Um, and one last thing that I want to talk about at the stop is just like the quality of professors at UT. So I didn't realize like, I knew UT was a good school and I knew that I was gonna get a great education coming here, but I didn't realize how um, incredible, like for lack of a better word, that my professors were going to be. Um, so one that I'm referencing to is last semester, two of my favorite classes I've taken in college um, like happened. One of them was called International Security. I walk in on the, f I walk in on the first day um, and this dude, he like walks in with a suit on, which is like not very normal for professors at UT. They're pretty like laid back and they very rarely wear like anything like business professional, at least in my experience. Um, so he walks in with a full suit on. So that got my attention. He like sets down his laptop and he goes, hi y'all, my name is Alan Kessler. I'm gonna be your professor for this semester, um, but I'm also a member of the CIA. I have to disclose that to you. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so my professor was an analyst for the CIA. And basically what he would do is he would take unclassified cases and he would apply them to general international security topics that we were learning about. And it's so, like the stuff that I was learning about was real world stuff that CIA analysts are working on like today, which is crazy. And then my other professor, um, that semester actually, that was a great semester for me. Um, he he taught a class called constitutional design. And I talked about this like probably too much, but um, it, he created this website called Constitute with like software engineers at Google, they like fund it basically. And he aggregates every constitution in the world, puts it into one place. And then um, every like diplomat who is thinking about making a constitutional amendment, like since this was launched, I believe it was in 2013. Um, actually, I don't know that for sure. But since it was launched, um, got to like check this website out to consider further constitutional amendments, if that makes sense. Because essentially what you can do is you can parallel your country based off of a country that has a similar economic and political um, structure as you. But I'm going way into detail about this. But the moral of the story is he was a phenomenal professor. He got to present this project to the United Nations. And he was just like an incredible person that was my professor of a class of 11 people. Um, so you're going to get such a great education at UT. I'm so excited for y'all. Um, but that's all I'm going to say for now because I've been talking for way too long. Uh, and Taylor's going to talk. take the next couple of stops. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I loved it. CIA, I, I was like, oh. Um, our next stop is actually directly connected to this building, and it's the PAB, the POB, or the Peter, Peter O'Donnell building. Um, and what's really cool about this building, um, other than me, like, knowing nothing else about it other than this one interesting fact is that it is actually home to one of the biggest supercomputers. I don't know if it's in the world, but I definitely know it's in this university. And so it's actually like really cool. As you can see um, in this picture, um, if you kind of look by the lady in the white past the dude in this blue shirt, you can actually see that those are like Xbox controllers and this entire computer is actually controlled by Xbox controllers. And so you can actually take a tour inside of it, like just walk inside and be like, I'm intrigued what's happening um, and they will, will literally give you the whole spiel about what it does one thing I do know is that they show you this really cool thing where they've like taken a picture of the skyline of Austin and you can zoom in super close to one person inside the frost building and I don't know what that building does but it is called frost and then you can look directly inside one of those windows and you can just keep zooming and you can see someone doing the hook em hand sign as clear as day like that person picture was taken directly in front of them and so like that's how clear this super computer is and it is definitely a really cool space for computers computer engineering as well as electrical and computer science to kind of go inside and kind of 
hone their craft, learn some new things. So that is something you're definitely interested in. I definitely say take a look inside the Peter O'Donnell building, just because you never know what you might learn. Um, something, else, something else that's also really cool about this little stop is that they actually have the virtual VR headsets and they go inside one of the museums and I want to say it's in France or maybe Paris. Um, and it, cause it had the Mona Lisa, you tell me where that's at. Um, and it was like really cool cause you actually got to like walk through the museum with a VR headset and like you got to like really look at these paintings that you really only would be able to do if you were actually there and so that is something that's also really cool about this stop but um it is definitely above my theater major head so I don't know anything else about it but I do know that it is really cool there's like a computer where you can touch everything and it's it's a really cool combination of, I want to just play in this building I don't know what it actually does but in this room specifically it is really cool to kind of see all the things that are going on in here um, but our next stop is actually going to be the EERC or the Engineering Education Research Center um, this is home to our Cocker School of Engineering and I know that it is like mostly for the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering but it is a place for every engineering student to kind of go inside just because it does have tons of different cool amenities for our engineering students and so one of those amenities is actually the Makerspace Lab. Um, and it is really cool because it actually is home to like a, a lot of 3D printers. And if you didn't know, fun fact, 3D printing was actually invented at UT. And so we do have the whole little Makerspace Lab for our engineering students to kind of make their own creations and stuff like that. I had a friend, I don't remember what his engineering was, but I have a friend who's an engineering major and he actually like came back and showed me that he made like a little hook'em hand and it was like a whole hand and they were doing the hook'em and I was like I want one and he was like too bad and I was like okay and so that's definitely something you can kind of go inside of this building kind of just take a look at it they also do tours of the makerspace lab so I definitely say take advantage of that when we are all able to get back on campus but it is just a really nice building I'm a theater major but I can always appreciate a good architectural build and that's literally what this building is um, it's one of the newest ones on campus I think it's like maybe two to three years old I remember when it was here and I remember when it wasn't here that's how old I am um, and so it's definitely one of those spaces where you can kind of just walk in it has tons of different like airy space to kind of just study and chill as you can see inside this building um i remember one of the tours i went on was a question was like do you get distracted by all the windows inside this building if you're taking a class when in all actuality the classes don't look like that like the whole back window situation is the makerspace lab and so you're not really like sitting in a glass box when you're taking a class um, but something that I really like to talk about this stop is studying abroad. And so I definitely say UT is one of the best schools to actually study abroad at, most because it is ranked fourth in sending students abroad. And so it's one of those places where I knew that if I ever wanted to study abroad, it was something that I was going to have to figure out how to do myself, just because no one in my family actually had been on a plane. We're all new to the whole situation. And so UT actually gave me tons of different options when it did come time for me to study abroad. And you're not required to study abroad, but I definitely say it's something that did help my student, like, career just because I got to get a broader perspective on what I already knew and what I didn't know as well. And so there are tons of different programs to study abroad here at UT. You can definitely go for a year long, you go for a semester long, you can go domestic, which means you just stay in the States and study abroad, or you can go international. And so there are tons of different options. Um, when I decided that I wanted to study abroad, I wanted to go big or go home. And so I actually went on a May semester, and what that is, it's just a month long program. And so I knew that I wanted to be gone and I want to be far but I didn't want to be gone for too long so I'm gonna let y'all know right now that month was actually a month too long I feel like week three I was ready to go but um, it was definitely just a very fun environment I actually got to go on a May master to Cape Town South Africa and what's really cool about it is that it was actually um, one of the programs that it wanted to send more students of color to study abroad. And so everyone that I went with were people that looked like me. We went to Cape Town, South Africa, surrounded by people that looked like us. It is for everyone. So if that is something you are still interested in, I definitely say talk to Dr. Moore um, or the like one person through academic excellence, 
I always forget what the E is, but um, I definitely say take advantage of that just because it is a really great opportunity out there. Um, it's one of the cheaper options and one of the cheaper programs to study abroad. And I got my history credit out the way. I had an internship when I was down there and I really just got to immerse myself in the country. And it was my first time on the plane. It was a 25 hour plane ride together. It was very long, um, and that was like 25 there and 25 back. It was a great time. But I definitely say I got to stop in Dubai on the way there and the way back, and so I definitely say if you want to study abroad, definitely do so because this campus does make it super accessible for students to study abroad, and you never know what experience you're going to have. And I definitely say it's one of my best college memories to date is my time studying abroad, definitely. Um, but moving on from our Engineering Education Research Center, we're actually going to go to the Norman Hackman building and Taylor's going to take it away. Before I do, that's insane. I did not know that was your first time on a plane, 25 hours, like, oh my god, no. <laughs> uh, but this is a Norman Hackerman building. This is right across from the building that Taylor was just talking about, the EER, the El Engineering um, Education and Research Center like maybe a three minute walk. Um, but this is home to our chemistry, biochemistry, biology, and neuroscience department. Um, There's a lot of stuff going on in here, but one thing that we like to talk about is the FRI program that stands for Freshman Research Initiative. And essentially what that allows you to do is to have a program built into your schedule, actually your first year on campus, if you get into this program, where you're doing lab research um, in some sort of stream. So the way that this program works is you do have to be a, um, a student within the College of Natural Sciences and you apply to it this summer um, or even like I think you could probably do it while you're still a senior if you've accepted your admissions. Um, you do it prior to coming to college is what you need to know and you'll get an e you'll get a bunch of emails about it if you're in the College of Natural Sciences and you apply to the program. Um, I'm not sure what the details of the application process are but you'll hear back before your first semester and before orientation when you have to register for classes and then if you get into the program you choose from about um, 16 different streams and streams represent like different areas of science that you can study. So for example, one of my best friends is a neuroscience major. She chose to be a part of this stream that focused on neurodegenerative um, diseases. And so whenever she did her FRI program, um, she did it her first year. She loved the program, became a mentor for her second year. And in between her first and second year of college, she got an internship in New York working on stem cell cancer research as an 18 year old. And she was telling me that she was like the youngest person in the lab by like almost five years because the quality of research that she was doing was so advanced past what most people her age were doing. A lot of undergraduate colleges throughout like the US are gonna offer research positions for freshmen. Um, but the unique thing about UT is that this is sort of like built into your schedule so you are actually having real quality research time if that makes sense um, where you're learning a lot and you have a really cool network of people so I definitely recommend looking into FRI if you're at all interested in research and you're in natural sciences um, but one thing to note is that research doesn't have to look like white lab coat, a uh, beaker, like, I don't know, I always think of like the big goggles that they wear, like that's not what research is always gonna look like. And this is since, yeah, that's exactly what research is gonna look like for them. Like if you walk through then you look through the little windows, they're just like over their beakers doing stuff. Um, but research has so many different forms. We have something called Eureka, and it basically aggregates every single um, research project being done on campus and puts it into one place, and you can type in any keyword, and then it pulls up all the projects that are related to that keyword. So when I was, whenever at the academic stop, I was talking about my professor who created that program called Constitute. That's a research opportunity for students on campus. He offered um, all of the 11 people in my class to come and work on that research project with him. And that's definitely, that's like still research in the same way that the FRI program is research. It just looks a little bit different. So look into research, even if you're not in um, a traditional STEM major, you might be very surprised. There's lots of opportunities for you to expand your knowledge. Um, but we're going to make our way to our next stop which is our last academic stop, and Taylor's gonna talk a little bit about communications. All right, so our next stop is actually the Below Center for New Media, uh, which is this building you can directly see in here, but the College of Communications is actually like one of the biggest colleges when it comes to like building wise, next to like engineering. And so there's this building, then as you can kind of see in the background, there's that bridge. 
and the bridge actually connects it to the other side of the street and there's like three more buildings on that side and so communications is definitely one of our like a, one of our like second third biggest colleges on campus that's because there's tons that does encompass it and so there's like journalism you can go into radio television and film pr so on and so forth and there's tons of different things to do inside of this building as well and so my minor is communication studies and so i did take a few classes in here but as i do know is that there are tons of ways for students to kind of just get involved in communication and so there's actually something called the tvs tv um, and that is for like communication students who are interested in media radio television film as well um, and that is something you can actually get to be a part of and i know they make like productions they make tv shows i think they have like a whole like like radio, like TV show, late night TV show station thing. I've never actually seen one. I've heard it's hilarious, but I've never actually seen one. But that's definitely just one of the things or one of the organizations you can actually be a part of as a communications major. Um, but then they also ways to get to become like your own DJ for a radio station. Um, I think one of our tour guides does that. And there's also like tons of different ways just to be involved. And so um, my knowledge of communications is very limited just because it is my minor. I'm barely in this building, but there are definitely tons of different ways to get involved as a communication student. And I think that's definitely the best part about being in communications because there's no limit of what you can actually do as well, just because there are tons of different things. And I said that like five times already, but it is a really great building. Um, this is actually like, everybody likes to say, this is like the home of Matthew McConaughey, just because he is now a intern. He actually is a professor now, I think. Um, and he actually teaches a class called Script to Screen. I do think you have to like be on the waiting list and like kind of got to get in it and it's like restricted on all types of areas. But if you are interested in that, that is something you're interested in, radio, television, film, anything like that, that's definitely um, the class you probably want to kind of get into. You can kind of see him stalking around the building some days. A lot of people try to like run towards him and then he just disappears. Um, and so this is definitely the building where it's home mess with kind of, hey, if you are into communications, I have tons of friends who did advertising and they did PR and they definitely said that the college communications make it so that students actually have jobs after this and they actually make it sure that you are prepared for the career that you're going into. And so one of my friends who actually graduated from PR here now works at Nickelodeon. And so that's definitely one of those things where it prepares you, they get internships, you go on internship fairs, you have to dress up for it all the nine. And so I definitely say this building does a really great job at making sure communication students are prepared for the next step. But that is all I really know about the BLO Center New Media. We can actually move on to one of the more fun stops on campus, which is actually home to our turtles. <laughs> yeah, so this is Turtle Pond. This is literally just a pond with turtles in it. Um, it's a just a fun place for students on campus. It's a place to relax. I think a couple of the labs within the College of Natural Science classes use it um, for some research. But I always think it's funny because every once in a while, like maybe once or twice a semester, the turtles will like sneak away from the pond and you'll find them in like weird parts of campus and then you have to like pick them up and bring them back. Well, I've never done it, but I've seen people do it. Um, so that's just a fun spot on campus. Whenever I call my parents, I usually do it from here. But now we're going to make our way to the south outside of campus, sorry about that, um, to a different water area. All right, yeah, so this is our little filled fountain. Um, it's actually home of one of the best views on campus because it goes directly up to that tower. If you ever just want to take a picture in front of the tower, the thing to do is to never be too close because in order to get that whole tower in it, you got to be a little farther and this is definitely one of those places to do it. Um, what's really cool about this is not only the fountain itself, but also what the fountain represents. And so, um, as you can see, there's like this lady, she's holding a torch and a palm of peace. I know that because I've seen it and I wondered what it was. Um, and she's like riding these like weird horned webbed horses. It's real incredible, it's real cool. Um, but it is a um, memorial for our veterans uh, who were Longhorns in World War I. Um, and so behind them, there's actually a door that has like all their names on it. It is a really cool memorial for um, those 
soldiers who did die. And so I definitely say it is a really cool spot on campus just because not only does it have a really cool significant meaning behind it, but it is also one of those places that a lot of students take advantage of. There's actually this superstition that you're not supposed to get into the fountain until you're ready to graduate. And so there are a lot of students that you'll see taking their senior pictures, and that's when they finally kind of sneak into the fountain. Um, I also am one of those people that did it. And so it is one of those things that when you're ready to graduate, you definitely kind of take a little dip in the fountain. Don't do it before that, or you won't graduate. Don't do it. Um, and so I definitely say it is one of those really cool and nice spots here on campus. But yeah, we're actually going to go a little closer to the tower now, and Taylor's going to end our tour. Perfect, thank you. Um, so if you walk past the fountain that Taylor was just talking about, you'll notice that there are three buildings on either side of you. Together, those make the six pack, which are the six original academic buildings of campus. And then you make your way to the tower right here. So the tower is kind of like the heart and soul of campus. It's a symbol of UT. If you're ever driving into Austin, you'll see it in the skyline. Um, and that's like kind of a beacon of just like being home for a lot of UT students. They talk about when they're driving into Austin from their original hometowns. Um, but we like to talk about the tower because there's a lot of tradition here. There's a lot of sentimental meaning. Um, a couple of tradition, traditions that I wanted to talk about really quickly um, is the first one is called Gone to Texas. So it is the night before your first day of classes freshman year. There is like a huge party on this little plaza right here. And then there is um, the Longhorn Band is there. The president is there. The cheerleaders are there. They release the largest Texas flag in the world, which like makes sense that we have the largest Texas flag, but it's just like weird, a weird, obscure fun fact. Um, and it's just sort of like a pep rally to get you ready for the next four years. And the next time you see it is during commencement ceremony um, at graduation. Um, and during both of those two ceremonies, they light up the tower with your graduation year. Um, and so the only, they kind of meant to book in your college career. Um, and the, the tower is lit up for you whenever you're first entering and you're leaving the university. Um, I like to talk about this because um, one of my like favorite memories from freshman year is actually we didn't get a Ghana, Texas because whenever I was coming in, um, it was during Hurricane Harvey. And being from Houston, like a lot of my friends couldn't get out of their town like their little suburbs let alone like move all of their stuff to Austin and so like out of respect for those people and all that they lost um, the university decided not to hold a gone to Texas but they lit up the tower with our graduation year for about a week and um, we had people as they trickled in from like different parts of the state come to the tower and we'd have like sort of many gone to Texas for like every night for about a week and it was very um inspiring for me to have that sense of community on campus um and I think I Taylor can talk a little bit about this but our last graduating class unfortunately didn't get a commencement ceremony because of the circumstances now but one of the really cool things that i got to see just as like an outsider perspective was the night of the commencement ceremony was meant to happen a bunch of people who were in austin put on their masks and they went out to the tower and they all just kind of looked at the tower while socially distanced together um because it still was lit up for their graduation year um and even though i wasn't there it was again a reminder of the sense of community that you get at ut and the feeling of family that we're all kind of in this together um, but one of my favorite things to do at the tower is to just like ask people what the tower means to them um, the people being my friends usually and they give me a weird look like why are you asking me that um, but it's because for me the tower has such a sentimental feeling um, it reminds me of family so I have this memory freshman year walking down the steps of the tower having an awful day I was like so tired I was hungry stressed about school, the usual. Um, and it sort of hit me in that moment that I wasn't only there to pursue my dreams and my goals, but I was there because of the people who had helped me every step of the way, like my support system. And for me, my support system is my family, specifically my mom, my dad, and my brother. Um, and one of the biggest pieces, um, like one of the biggest lessons, I guess, that I've learned in college is how important it is to have that support system and let them know that they're appreciated because Taylor can attest to this, but college is so much fun. There are so many highs and there are so many great memories you're gonna make, but there are also moments of growth where you're gonna to need to fall back on the people who are your support system, your loved ones, be that your friends, be that your family, whoever. Um, and it's so important that they know that not only do you, um, like are you there for them, but you appreciate what they do for you um, because you start really growing like long-term relationships. The friends that I've met in college, I know will be my friends for the rest of my life, like my best friends. Um, that's because they become my support system. 
So one of my biggest pieces of advice is to start building that early on in college. Try to find your people, join organizations, figure out what you enjoy the most, um, and then let them know that they're appreciated. Um, because that's like one of the coolest things to be able to end college and like have that support system of people that you know that you're gonna like be with um, even if not physically, but like emotionally for like the rest of your life, which is cool. So that's a little bit of a piece of advice from me. Um, thank you guys so much for taking a virtual tour with us. We have appreciated you listening to this like basically hour long video now. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna throw it to Taylor to give some party notes if you want to. Yeah, so just like Taylor was saying, um, definitely appreciate those people that kind of helped you get through even high school, get through college, because that's definitely the people who are going to be there forever. They're going to stay there. Um, but also, when it comes time to choosing university, I just to say, choose one you feel like is the perfect place for you, the perfect space for you. <laughs> um, just because I remember when I was going on tons of different campus tours, like getting a feeling of all these different universities, it was very overwhelming in a sense. But also when it came time to make a decision, I ultimately knew where I was going. And it stemmed from the first campus tour that I ever took. And so I definitely say that like, you're gonna have that inkling. There's gonna be people telling you where to go. There's gonna be people giving you hints or suggestions. But I definitely say in your heart, you know where you belong, you know where it's the place where you feel like you're going to have the best four years, five, six, wherever, how long it takes you, you definitely choose a university based on that. And that I knew the minute I stepped on this campus as a little loud mouth freshman, and trust me, I was one, I definitely knew that this place was going to breed me to be the best person that I can be and prepare me for my future. And it definitely did. And I will never take back the best four years that I've had in my life. And Taylor's, Taylor Tash is about to come up on that too. She's going to feel gonna fill it um but yeah just what she was saying about commencement and going to texas i was a class that didn't, unfortunately didn't get my commencement but i did get to go out i got to saw the tower light up again i had to go to texas and i had some kind of rendition of a commencement now and it's definitely saved this university definitely helped me prepare for my future and so that's all i really have to say tash ended it beautifully thank you for being on a tour it has been a great hour communication video talking to ourselves um but it's been fun um and i hope you all have a fantastic day night whenever you're viewing this video and yeah hope you have a great day and hook them horns <laughs> um.